Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika, thank you very much for clicking on this video today. I'm still uh, making videos as part of my eyeshadow palette extravaganza here on my channel. And in today's installment, we will be talking about all things cool toned eyeshadow palettes. Today I will be featuring eight eyeshadow palettes that are currently on the market that may have you wonder which one might be right for me. And I've been doing videos like this for a while, so I've already ha I already have two videos up with some other palettes, so in case you're wondering, hey, why aren't you mentioning palette so-and-so, make sure to check the links in the description box below, because I have definitely already talked about some cool toned eyeshadow palettes in the past in this sort of capacity. There is one eyeshadow palette in here that I haven't used yet, and that also happens to be quite controversial, so I'll leave that one towards the end of the video so you can watch everything else, and then when that one comes up, you can either click away from the video or whatever. Uh, but I did try all the other things that I have here for you today, so let's chat about, well, eight, seven <laughs> uh, cool-toned eyeshadow palettes and who I think these might be right for. Let's go. Uh, so let's just start with what's on top. I, I definitely have a mixed bag here of some indie stuff, some mainstream stuff, some more affordable things as well. But I would like to kick us off with the Pretty Cool by Dose of Colors. And this eyeshadow palette is one that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. Very often when people mention these little Dose of Colors palettes, this is not one of the shades that they talk about. Um, and it's such a shame because if you're looking for good, cool-toned, neutrally kind of mattes, then this pretty cool palette by Dose of Colors is really nice. And the reason why I say cool tone to neutral is because I feel that these two shades aren't that cool tone. They are quite warm. Where we get a little bit more cool is on this side of the palette. This is five shades of mattes. I really like the Dose of Colors matte formula. It's very powdery though, so that has to be your cup of tea. But I really enjoy this one. My favorite shade in the palette has to be this one, which is called Fine Print, which has a green undertone to it. And what this palette essentially gives you is five different shades of matte topes and in like different undertones, different warms, different depths. Um, these would all still fall into the taupe category for me. Um, one is a bit more creamy, one's a bit more brown, this is a bit more gray toned, this is a bit more green toned, and then we have one that's a bit more plum toned. Because taupes, depending on how they are blended, can look very differently. As a standalone palette, this doesn't really work for me. I definitely want to pull in other things, something like a, a ColourPop Super Shock Shadow I like to pair these with. But I also love pairing this with some of my uh, Stila Glittering Glows. So these little... Um, Dose of Colors eyeshadow palettes are just really nice. I really enjoy these. Um, but it, the formula has to be your cup of tea. You have to like mattes and don't expect to get a full look that is very different every single time. There are only five shades here. This is definitely sort of like a palette that you pull in to then pair it with other things. That's how I would describe this one. Another one that's also much more curated, but that I think I prefer a little bit over the dose of colors pretty cool and that would be the melt gunmetal stack and i'm so hoping because melt seems to be turning all of their stacks into palettes so i'm hoping that this is going to be an eyeshadow palette because if this one could marry the dose of colors pretty cool i think we would have a really really cool cool tone palette on our hands so this comes with this almost like gray tone champagne let me see what this is called this is harsh stone white but it's not super white it is sort of like a dirty white if that's a thing uh, it definitely has a little bit of like gray like a gray tone to it i feel and then you only get one matte in the stack which i'm pretty sure that's one of the reasons why again this is not something a lot of people talk about I prefer shimmers over mattes, I've told you this many times before, um, but you only get Assimilate in here, which is a really nice matte taupe. And then, where it is at for me in this stack is these two last shimmers. We have Industrial and we have Gunmetal. So this is what the stack is named after. This is a really nice like blue tone charcoal gray and Industrial is a very nice deep taupe. I'm trying to see if I can have it catch the light here. like. I think that way you can see it very well. And this 
was so so stunning. I wore this in my on my eyes when I was about to film a lipstick video where I had to try on lots of different colored lipsticks and people were commenting me on like how much they like this stack looking on my face. Like it's really really gorgeous. It is very smoky though. So I feel that if you get a couple of the lighter mattes from the uh, from the dose of colors and maybe one other shimmer that's perhaps a little lighter then I think that could make a stunning like eight pan palette like Melt has been doing. Are they eight or ten? I think eight. The She's in Parties was turned into an eight pan palette so if this had four additional say shades with like two sort of like maybe one or two more like mid-tone mattes and like a lighter shimmer and maybe like a really dark matte I, I, I would definitely buy that. So this Melt Cool Tone Palette is one of my favorites. This is such a great, great color story. It's just, it's very limiting because you only get four shades. Very recently, Nabla came out with the Platinum Cutie Palette. This is uh, number three. So there are five of these in this little series right now. And this is what it looks like. And uh, this is one that I tried fairly recently. Um, and this is just a really, really cute little color story. I do have to say though that this is the cool tone palette for people who like warm tones. The other two can I think look quite ashy if you don't have a cool to neutral undertone yourself. If you are more olive toned or maybe if you have a much deeper skin tone then I think you might like something like this because there is a little bit more warmth in these shades and especially in that golden tone over there. Like in my book you only get three real cool tones in here and that's these three these can look a little bit more pink toned if you already have a cooler undertone. So that's why these are more like neutrals to me. But I think if you have a warm undertone that these can pull a little bit more warm because they have more brown to them and almost like a reddish undertone as well. It just has a stunning silver, a stunning shimmering taupe. Mine has already gotten a little bit of hard pan it seems, but it still picks up fine with a brush. I was able to create a look with it just fine. And I really like the look that I came up with when I tried this. I used all the six shades in one look and it works really well that way as well. But because you do get some different undertones, some different colors here, I feel that these six shades are a little bit more versatile than the dose of colors and the melt. I love the melt quality, but because you only get four shades, it can be quite limiting. In here, you do have a little bit more to play around with. And this is more like a, more versatile but still very curated color story in my book. In a very similar vein to the Nabla palette, they, uh, I would also like to mention the Venus Immortalis here by Lime Crime. This can be a little bit harder to find by now but I think the official Lime Crime website still stocks this. And this was, I think, released for Christmas last year and I snatched mine up. A lot of people have had trouble with this one getting hard pan on them, but mine is still fine. I've had this for over nine months now and it's still looking creamy and it still feels great. No hard pan here for me. Of course, the two shades that really drew me in are these two. This is Echo and Hail. Echo is like a perfect shimmering taupe. Hail is like a silver, but it's not too stark. The silver you get in the Nabla is much more like that vibrant blue toned kind of like silver that will just like be seen from space. Whereas this is more like the kind of more muted silvery tones that you find in like aluminum foil. Like that's what it reminds me of. It's like aluminum foil for your eyes, you could say. So for me, this is a really, really stunning shade as well. You get a good range of like mattes in here. But these two shades here both have a little bit of like a fleck of some shimmer or glitter in them which might make it seem like, uh, well, can I really use it? This white is stunning in the inner corner though I find. Moth is such a great transition shade on me personally. And then you get these two shades. If you pull things in with together with the plum you get a very different look than when you pull in the grey. Uh, and then you get a black to sort of deepen things up and make everything very dark and smoky. Or you can use the black as liner. That's my preferred uh, way. Cameo is probably my least favorite shade in this palette. And the reason for that is that it's become, it's just a little bit too pale to work as a transition on me. It's definitely a really nice blend shade though. So this, and you combine it with the darker mattes that are in here, you can very easily customize your crease shade if you'd like to. So again, if you're looking for a cool tone palette that like where is where I feel the Nabla has some warmth to it, 
this isn't. This is void of anything warm whatsoever. So if you have a cool or neutral undertone and you want something a little bit more intense from your cool tone palette, but you still want it to be versatile and you still want it to be like a little bit more like inspiring than just a boring like gray toe palette, then this is definitely a step up. Again, uh, I love this one. This made me fall in love with all things Lime Crime. Let's talk about a color story that could be very boring when you think about it, but that I think ColourPop did a really, really good job with making a lot more interesting than it could have been. Um, this is the Smoke Show, which has been rebranded to Blowing Smoke. They had some copyright issues with the name. And I knew that I saw this that I wanted to try this because... Can I open you? Yes, I can. It has this taupe for one. Like, I live for taupe shadow. You guys know that about me. I did an entire video swatching as many of the cool uh, the taupe eyeshadows that I could find in my collection, so I will link that in the eye above in case you're interested. But this also gives you a charcoal gray shimmer and like a very vibrant silvery shimmer. You get lots of interesting mattes. You also get something that has a bit more of a plummy undertone. And what I really liked about this palette is that depending on how you put certain shades together, you can make it look a bit more cool toned or you can make it look a little bit more gray or you can make it look a little bit more plum. Like these two shades together work really well. The only shade in here that I'm like, ah, eh, there's a black with glitter in here. It makes for a pretty aligner, but that's about the only thing that I can do with that. But this has lots of dimension and lots of versatility for something that's just essentially blacks, grays, and creamy whites. Like, that's all you get in here. But I found that this was a color story that I think a lot of people were waiting for. If you are not willing to splurge a lot of money on one of these cool tone palettes, but you'd like to give it a try, I think the Smoke Show can give you a little bit from what the Melt has to offer combined with what the Lime Crime has to offer and gives it at a very affordable price point of just $12. So this ColourPop one is definitely, and this is also one of the better quality ColourPop palettes in these like monochromatic series that they've been doing. Like this is really, really stunning quality too. And then a palette that also blew me away and that is more affordable is the Love in London by BH Cosmetics. This is another one of those palettes, like I, li I just live for the packaging already to begin with, uh, where there is a bit more warmth in here. Like you get uh, this shade right here, that's a little bit more warm called Queen, but everything else in here, you can make work if you're looking for something a little bit more cool toned to neutral leaning. However, if you have a warmer undertone, this will not just look ashy and flat if you start putting looks together. You can make this work, you could say. You get a stunning taupe, you know what, how I feel about that. But what makes this palette for me is sort of like these three shades. You get a plum, you get a navy, and then this. Charcoal gray with a blue undertone. And if you know anything about me, my favorite sort of smoky kind of look to do, well, if you know anything about me, then you'll know that my, one of my favorite sort of looks to do is a sm navy smoky eye. And I feel that these two together can give you just that. Um, some of these shimmers and like other things that are going on here, they look warmer in the pan than they do when, when you use them on your eyes. However, in my case, that could be because I'm already fair skinned and I've got a cool to neutral undertone. So this could be another case of if you have a warmer undertone, things in here can start pulling a bit warmer and it's probably not as cool toned as some of the other things I'm showing here. I mean, grays can look very flat on some people. On me, they look really nice. <laughs> but yeah, the BH Cosmetics Love in London is perhaps, if you don't want to spend too much money on an eyeshadow palette and you would like to try a cool tone color story and you have a warmer undertone, then I think this may be a really nice one. And then we're getting to the final eyeshadow palette that I actually tried on my eyes. And that's also a palette that I thought was a little bit disappointing. And it's the V Cosmetics V Cosmetics Grimoire Palette. This is an indie brand from the UK and when I spotted this on Instagram I was like that sounds like an eyeshadow palette that I can get down with. I love the packaging. V Cosmetics I believe is completely vegan. They have so many things going for them and they do a lot of eyeshadow palettes and makeup inspired by like witchcraft occult kind of things. So that was totally up my street as well. So I'll show you what this palette looks like and then I'll tell you why I thought this was a little bit disappointing. Well, first of all, you get lots of very dark shades 
and this packaging is white. I can't show you the mirror because I will blind you, but this, this mirror is covered in black specks more and more every single time I open this palette. So the fact that this is a white palette, if you start using this a lot, and especially if you're not very careful, this is just not going to look pretty for a long time. But that's packaging. What my main gripe is with this palette is that none of the swatches, none of the information I could find before purchasing this informed me that this palette has two press glitters. This one and this one. And that's such a shame because these press glitters aren't good press glitters either. They are very sparse, they are very difficult to take off, and I was very afraid that these would get into my eyes. Like, I've tried other press glitters and I don't like press glitters, but if I need to make them work, I usually can. But with these, I just didn't really feel they added anything to the look. And then you're left with very, very few interesting shimmering shades. Now, I love shimmers over mattes. I already told you that. So for me, there's only like like this like row at the top and that one, that's like the only shimmer I can get down with. Everything else is a bit meh. Um, in terms of mattes, you get quite a few mattes, but I don't really have a good transition shade in here for my complexion. Um, sure, you could perhaps take some of this and blend it with some of the shades down here, but I feel that it goes very green very quickly, and I would just like to have like a gray or like a taupey transition because this is a shimmer, this is a shimmer, but like more of like a satin, they don't really build up to lots of intensity. And then you just get this black, this gray, and then that's it. So you have five really dark shades. I felt that these two greens were a little bit samey, samey on the eye. So for me, this just wasn't perfect. I do have to say though, one shade in this palette that completely blew my mind was this shimmering black. Very often when a black comes with shimmer, it's a matte with like sparkles, but this is a full on glistening. Like I cannot describe this color in any other way than to describe it as black ice. That's just what it reminds me of. So this is a stunning shade. This is a stunning shade and everything else. I'm like, meh. I thought I was going to love this palette, but in the end, it just didn't really work with what I like. However, this is my bridge to the next palette. Please click out of the video if you don't like Jeffree Star. Um, I bought this palette right before everything went down, so I have it and I just want to be transparent about the fact that I have it. It's just that I'm only going to be showing his stuff in this video and in my eyeshadow palette collection video and after that, I will never mention Jeffree Star on my channel again. I just want to be completely transparent because the reason why this is a bridge is because a lot of people are naming this palette as a dupe or alternative to the cremated palette. And I can see why people say that because like the V Cosmetics, Jeffree Star Cremated also has some of those green tones in it. Now, this is one that I haven't put on my face yet, but I did swatch it and in my opinion, opinion, just based on the swatches, I don't think that the V Cosmetics palette has anything on the Jeffree Star palette in terms of quality. The V Cosmetics one is quite powdery, they can be a bit more difficult to blend, whereas this, everything is creamy, buttery, smooth, and when I saw this video, you know, when I saw this palette and me liking Cool Tone so much, I was like, yeah, I, I want to try that. I want to try that. So I haven't put it on my face yet, but I did swatch it and every, like everything just feels wonderful in this palette. Um, I think that the V Cosmetics has some true grays or true greens, I should say, whereas this one doesn't. It's like more like grays with a green undertone, um, a bit like that shade in the Dose of Colors Pretty Cool. So I think that if you don't want to get the cremated palette, you can try this because it definitely has a couple of those like lovely shimmers that the Jeffree Star has too. I just think that if you truly want to go for like an alternative like the cremated palette, I think you're better off getting like two things like a dose of colors and a melt gun metal stack. I think that way you can sort of cre recreate the vibes. If you don't want to spend that much money on it, I definitely would recommend the ColourPop uh, 
smoke show or blowing smoke. Like that I think will get you even closer to what the cremated has to offer. It just doesn't have those like murky, muddy, greeny kind of shades that the cremated has. This is just a little bit too green compared to the cremated, in my opinion. And I don't think that the quality is as nice as the Jeffree Star. So yeah, I will be trying out those shadows in my own time. Um, and uh, I'm not going to be mentioning it again. So I just want to keep it short and sweet here. So of these eight palettes, there are six that I highly recommend. One I leave you to make up your mind about, and one I say I wouldn't spend your money on it. Not because it's a, it's not a bad palette, you guys. It's just I would have liked in the marketing to see that there was actually pressed glitters in there, and I also would have wanted a little bit more out of the color story overall, but that's just me. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this was helpful for you. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week normally, but because we're doing eyeshadow palette month, I am currently uploading extra on Saturdays. So I hope you would like to stay tuned for everything else that's to come, and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye!